Professor Colombo, talking about the burden of hepatitis C, where are we today in terms of elimination and cure of the disease? Uh, there are still uh, more than 70 million people chronically infected by hepatitis C worldwide, and Europe hosts at least 9 million. There is a great variability in terms of geographical distributions, and within the same countries, there are special groups of patients that have at higher risk of uh, acquiring viral hepatitis and therefore represent the natural reservoir of infection. And I'm just pinpoint to the PWIDs, the people with the history of drug abuse, and other communities. Currently, uh, a, a, an effort has been done worldwide to reduce the burden by increasing patient access uh, to antiviral therapy that has uh, come recently to be a user-friendly, very effective, devoid of any toxicity form of therapy, even short-lasting, and based on the assumption of one or three pills per day for a maximum of 12 weeks. Fantastic. This results in more than 95% rate of a permanent cure of hepatitis C. Several countries, particularly in Europe, have started a campaign to increase awareness and also to explain the cost effectiveness and the cost saving properties of uh, early assessing patients to therapy with hepatitis C, since we realize that when you get cure of the virus with this regimen in a very advanced phase of liver disease, you still need to be medically monitored over the years because of the remaining risk of developing complication, particularly liver cancer. And to implement such a campaign of virus hepatitis eliminations, there are several options on the table. One is to simplify the process of identification, cure, and monitoring. And to this end, there are a few new develop uh, point of care test that go straightly identifying patients who are virally, the host the virus. And this test would take between 30 and 90 minutes to provide diagnosis. So the patients stay in the same place that where they are tested, they can receive counseling and they start entering the treatment process. We have also had adopted simplify algorithms for monitoring response to therapy. But of course, while targeting special populations like PWIDs, we have put in place also other strategies, arm reduction, first of all, treating patients in the host facilities and the needle syringe program to be expanded to prevent reinfection, based on the assumption that if you treat this highly infectious set of patients, you might prevent dissemination of hepatitis to the general population. And this is going forward also for other subgroups of patients like prisoners and migrants. This sounds indeed promising. Um, you've just been part of the press conference um, that um, talked about the first center of excellence in viral hepatitis elimination in Georgia. And you, I believe you're also a chairperson of this initiative. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. The Eastern International Liver Foundation that I'm chairing launched a program of establishing center of excellence worldwide in those areas that need assistance in developing a campaign of virus hepatitis elimination. Georgia is a perfect model because there, through an interaction between a provider of uh, treatments, a pharma, big pharma, the CDC of Atlanta and the local health authorities it was possible to launch a campaign whereby currently the vast majority of the Georgian patients chronic cards of hepatitis B has been targeted, identified and treated, successfully treated. Of course, what uh, needs to be put in place is a registry to obtain some metrics of what has been done. And uh, the International Liver Foundation, by funding a center of excellence uh, is providing all the scientific assistance that is necessary to implement such a strategy, not to speak about the need of creating bonds with all those countries that are in place and are working toward viral hepatitis elimination with a certain level of success. 
we are here at part of the ESO, um, very interesting and enticing conference. Could you just tell us a little bit about your personal highlights this year? Well, this conference has been, as usually, a great success, not only in terms of audience, but particularly in terms of interaction between the communities of doctors, because, you know, there is a lot of heterogeneity in the family of liver doctors. There are some who are most involved in science, others, majority, that are practitioner, and also a, an expanding set of uh, doctors, liver doctors, who are engaged into the public health policy strategies. So it's uh, relevant to this that a meeting like ILC can provide a forum for each of these uh, set of patient, of, 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 uh, of uh, patient expert and uh, uh, liver experts to interact with each other. Not to speak about the role that patients advocacy are having in the success of this uh, uh, event. So in summary, there has been delivery of good science as usually every year. There has been delivery of good uh, clinical practice, but most importantly, there has been much energy put in strengthening the relationships between the various segments of a public health provider with a special attention to the advocacies and in particular to the scientific associations. Professor Colombo, thank you very much for all your insights and uh, have a good rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you so much to you.